Hello, everyone. We think this is working. Hello. Welcome to the Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. We're excited that you're here. Please let us know in the chat if you're getting this message. Uh, my name is Jeremy Fiebig, by the way. I'm the Artistic Director of Sweet Tea Shakespeare. We're uh, very glad you're here tonight celebrating Halloween Eve with us. Um, uh, hooray. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I know some folks will be joining over the next few minutes. I'm going to shut up now. We're going to play some music from our house band at Sweet Tea. They're called the Worshipful Company of Spectacle Makers. And I'll, I'll chime in here in a few. Um, hopefully, all of my buttons work. But if they don't, we'll, we'll figure it out. Thank you. Good to see you. Hello. Touch it feels like the first night. And every time we kiss, it feels like the last try. I've been writing letters trying to make it all alright. But every time we fight, it feels like a goodbye. And it feels like if everything ceased to exist, we'd be left with the memory of this. And I'm not gonna let it go down like
Hello, everyone. I'm led to believe that we are live. So hello, my name is Jeremy Fiebig. I'm the artistic director of Sweet Tea Shakespeare. So glad that you've joined us tonight. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Um, we're just really excited that you're here celebrating All Hallows Eve Eve. So thank you. Uh, um, I'm really excited about this show tonight. Um, it's great to connect with this fun group of people. Um, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to play some music from our house band at Sweet Tea Shakespeare. They're called the Worshipful Company of Spectacle Makers. You're going to listen to them for a bit, and then I'll be back with some show announcements and that sort of thing. Thanks for being here. See you soon. Every time we touch, it feels like the first night. And every time we kiss, it feels like the last try. I've been writing letters trying to make it all alright. But every time we fight, it feels like a goodbye. And it feels like your fairy can cease to exist. And we've been left with the memory of this. And I'm not gonna let it go down like that. I don't wanna die in Kiss me, baby. I don't wanna die in
All right, folks. Welcome. We're going to get started in a few minutes. We're probably going to um, uh, uh, start just a little bit past 730 so that all of the folks, um, well, I'll be honest with you, all the folks from Fayetteville who um, are used to coming late will make it. So we're, uh, we're going to wait for them. Um, I'm, I'm really, really glad, glad you're here. here. I, I see, see some familiar faces. faces. Uh, thank, thank you for being, being here, here so much. So much. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, humbling, humbling and honoring, honoring that, that you would you spend, spend your time, time with us tonight. tonight. I'm, I'm just going to make some show announcements. announcements. We're going to play, play some more music. music. I'll make some, some more show announcements, then I'm going to pass it off to the folks who are handling the show tonight. Um, so, so I, I just, just want to say, say um, uh, it's, it's impossible to make theater in the COVID, COVID era, era. But, but we and so, and so many, many other companies are trying our best, and we're so grateful to the artists, uh, like, like the ones you'll see tonight, tonight, who are committing their time, their time and energy, energy to, to uh, uh, making, making this happen. This happen. Um, Sweet Feet Shakespeare, Shakespeare, we're a small uh, nonprofit theater company based in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're expanding to Raleigh soon. We've, we've been doing our best in the COVID era. We've started a podcast. We've done all kinds of crazy things. If you want to find out more about our work, you just visit our website, sweetteashakespeare.com. Many of you bought tickets there, so that's great. And I would also encourage you to visit patreon.com slash sweetteashakes. You'll hear more about that over the course of the night. But essentially, if you don't know Patreon, it's like GoFundMe or Indiegogo, um, except it's a monthly pledge. Um, and there are a lot of behind the scene perks and tickets to all our digital stuff that you can get there. But that monthly support is like uh, super important for us at this time. Um, uh, Sweet Tea, Sweet tea is, is, about is about gathering, gathering people, people, people around, around uh, what, uh, what we, we fashion, fashion as, as a common, common table, table to take, take delight, delight in the wonders of story, song, and stagecraft. And that is why you're here tonight. And we're glad that you're gathering around the table with us. So, so thank, thank you so, you so much. much. I'm, I'm going to play a couple more songs, and then we will get into the thick of things before too, too long. Thanks for being here. Say hi in the chat. Welcome.
Hello again. Um, hopefully I've fixed the echo. I think I figured out what button I didn't click. Uh, we're really glad you're here. Again, my name is Jeremy. Um, uh, I see many, I see so many people. Hi, Jack Bessel. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Claire. Um, thank you for being here. And, and to our new friends, uh, thank you for being here as well. Um, I'm, I've got just a little bit more business and then we're going to get right into the show before too long. So one thing I want to say um, is that uh, we would, uh, let me say this, one-time donations that come through Sweet Tea tonight uh, at sweetteashakespeare.com slash give. Again, I'll, I'll, it'll appear in the chat as well, but sweetteashakespeare.com slash give. Those donations tonight are being distributed to all of the artists that you are going to see on screen in the Spanish tragedy tonight. So if you would like to support their work, if we receive it at Sweet Tea Shakespeare tonight, we will distribute it to them. So when you go onto that page, you just scroll down and it's, there's like a little button that says one time donation. You just click it and it's going to take you to a page and all the rest it should be pretty familiar to you if you use the internet at all. Anyway. Um, we're glad you're here. Um, I want to introduce someone to you. His name is Liam Daly, and I'm going to invite him to take over the screen or to join me on screen. Hi, hello. there he is. Liam, hello. Hello. Good evening. Thanks for having me here. Invite him to... Um, welcome. I'm so I'm I'm I have to, there's so many buttons. I have to turn that one off so that I can talk to you. Isn't that exciting? I'm not excited. Okay, here you are. Um uh welcome Liam. It's nice to meet you. Tell us a little bit about you. Hi, so Hi. I'm Liam Daly. I'm the um social media dramaturg for this uh production, which means that uh over the course of the show, I will be adding um, comments in the chat section. Uh, just some quick facts about the play that you're watching that may be of interest, uh, some context. But of course, we also um, invite you to comment throughout the show as well. Your thoughts, your questions, or even just to like register a reaction to the show that you are watching. So that's what I'm going to be doing here tonight. Welcome. Um, glad you're here. I'm going to be watching as well. I'm about to log off and just enjoy the show. I have my, in case, in case audience members, if you have not grabbed your drink, this is the benefit of COVID theater is like, you can grab a, a glass of Tempranillo or you can do what I'm doing, which is um, some bourbon. Uh, equally welcome. Enjoy the show that way if you wish. Uh, Liam, uh, thanks for being here. Cast, I know you're, you're listening off stage as it were. Thank you for being here. Everybody who's here tonight, enjoy the show. Liam, I'm handing off to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, good to be here, as I said. Um, so I've already <laughs> invited you to uh, comment if you would like to uh, in the chat during the show. We would love to know uh, what you think as you're watching it. And um, I know this has been said already but I can just add um, any donations that you make for the show will go directly to the artists involved during the show. Uh, the link is sweetteashakespeare.com forward slash give. That link will be in the chat. Um, and so without further ado, we present The Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. You that have lost your former choice And now in war your lives to lead Feeding on naught but dire noise Thinking your grief, all grief succeed Assure yourselves it is not so Though you're a sight of greater woe. When 
this eternal substance of my soul did live imprisoned in my wanton flesh. I was a courtier in the Spanish court. My name was Don Andrea. My descent, though not ignoble, yet inferior far to gracious fortunes of my tender youth. For there in prying and pride of all my years, my duteous service and deserving love, in secret I possessed a worthy dame, which I sweet fell imperia by name. But in the harvest of my summer joys, death's winter nipped the blossoms of my bliss, forcing divorce betwixt my love and me. For in the late conflict with Portugal, my valor drew me into dangerous mouth to life, to death, made passage through my wounds. When I was slain, my soul descended straight to pass the flowing stream of Acheron, and was the ferryman of hell content to pass me over to the slimy strand. By pleasing Severus with honeyed speech, I passed the perils of the foremost porch. Keeping on my way to Pluto's court, I saw more sights than thousand tongues can tell or pens can write, or mortal hearts can think. Three ways there were, that on the right-hand side was ready unto the martial fields where lovers live and bloody martialists. The left-hand path, declining fearfully, was ready downfall to the deepest hell, and murderers groan with never killing wounds and all foul sins with torments overwhelmed. Twixt these two, I trod the middle path, which brought me to the fair Elysian green. Here finding Pluto with his Proserpine, I showed my passport, humbled on my knee, where at fair Proserpine began to smile, and begged that only she might give my doom. Forth with revenge, she rounded thee in the ear and bade thee lead me through the gates of horn, where dreams have passage into silent night. Sooner had she spoke, but we were here. I wot not how in twinkling of an eye. Then know, Andrea, that thou art arrived where thou shalt see the author of thy death, Don Balthazar, the Prince of Portugal, deprived of life by Bel Imperia. Here sit we down to see the mystery and serve for chorus in this tragedy. Now, say, Lord General, how fares our camp? Oh, well, my sovereign liege, except some few that are deceased by fortune of the war. Speak true. Hath fortune given us victory? Victory, my liege, and that with little loss. <laughs> uh, the Portingals will pay us tribute, then. Tribute and wanted homage therewithal. Mm, then blessed be heaven and guider of the heavens, from whose fair influence such justice flows. But general, unfold in brief discourse your form of battle and your war's success. Ah, where Spain and Portugal do jointly knit their frontiers, leaning on each other's bound, there our armies met in their proud array, both menacing alike with daring shows, both raising dreadful clamors to the sky. Our battles both were pitched in squadron form. Both battles join and fall to handy blows. On every side drop captains to the ground and soldiers, some ill-maimed, some slain outright. Here falls a body sundered from his head. There legs and arms lie bleeding on the grass, mingled with weapons and unbowled steeds that scattering overspread the purple plain. The victory to neither part inclined till Don Andrea with his brave lanciers in their main battle made so great a breach that half dismayed the multitude retired. <laughs> but Balthazar, the Portugal's young prince, brought rescue and encouraged them to stay. And in that conflict was Andrea slain. Yet while the prince insulting over him breathed out proud vaunts, Sounding to our reproach, friendship, and hearty valor joined in one pricked forth Horatio, our knight marshal's son, to challenge forth that prince in single fight. But straight the prince was beaten from his horse and forced to yield him prisoner to his foe. When he was taken, all the rest they fled. 
But tell me now, hast thou confirmed a peace? Ah, uh, no peace, my liege, but peace conditional, that if with homage tribute be well paid, the fury of your forces will be stayed, and to this peace their viceroy hath subscribed. These words, these deeds become thy person well. But now, Knight Marshal, frolic with thy king, for tis thy son that wins this battle's prize. Long may he live to serve my sovereign liege. Nor thou nor he shall die without reward. <laughs> What means the warning of this trumpet sound? This tells me that your grace's troops of war come marching on towards your royal seat. Ah, a gladsome sight. I long to see them here. Is that the warlike prince of Portugal that by our nephew was in triumph led? But what is he that on the other side holds him by the arm as partner of the prize? That is my son, my gracious sovereign. Ah, bring hither the young prince of Portugal. The rest march on. Welcome, Don Balthazar, welcome, nephew. And thou, Horatio, thou art welcome too. Young prince, although thy father's hard misdeeds deserve but evil measure at our hands, yet shalt thou know that Spain is honorable. The trespass that my father made in peace is now controlled by the fortunes of the wars. His troops are slain, a weakening to his realm. His son distressed, a corsive to his heart. These punishments may clear his late offense. Aye, Balthazar, if he observe this truce, our peace will grow the stronger for these wars. For in our hearing thy deserts were great, and in our sight thyself art gracious. But tell me, for their holding makes me doubt, to which of these twain art thou prisoner? To me, my liege. To me, my sovereign. This hand first took his courser by the reins. But first my lance did put him from his horse. I seized his weapon and enjoyed it first. But first I forced him lay his weapons down. Say, worthy prince, to whether didst thou yield? To him, in courtesy, to this, perforce. He promised life, this other threatened death. He won my love, this other conquered me, and truth to say, I yield myself to both. But that I know your grace were just and wise, my tongue should plead for young Horatio's right. Content thee, Marshal, thou shalt have no wrong. And for thy sake, thy son shall want no right. Will both abide the censure of my doom? I crave no better than your grace awards. Nor I, although I sit beside my right. Then by my judgment, thus your strife shall end. You both deserve and both shall have reward. Nephew, thou took'st his weapon and his horse. His weapons and his horse are thy reward. Horatio, thou didst force him first to yield. His ransom, therefore, is thy valor's fee. Appoint the sum, as you shall both agree. But nephew, Thou shalt have the prince in guard, for thine estate best fitteth such a guest. Now let us hence to see our soldiers paid, and feast our prisoner as our friendly guest. Is our ambassador dispatched for Spain? Uh, two days, my liege, are passed since his depart. And tribute payment gone along with him. Aye, my good lord. Yeah. Then rest we here a while in our unrest and feed our sorrows with some inward sighs. For deepest cares break never into tears. Here let me not lie. Now am I at the lowest. Fortune may bereave me of my crown here. Take it now. Let fortune do her worst. Such is the folly of despiteful chance. My breach of faith occasioned bloody wars. Those bloody wars have spent my treasure, and with my treasure, my people's blood, and with their blood, my joy, and best beloved, my best beloved, my sweet and only son. 
No doubt, my liege, but still the prince survives. Survives? I where? In Spain, a prisoner uh, by mischance of war. Then they have slain him for his father's fault. That were a breach to common law of arms. So they wreck no laws that meditate revenge. His ransom worth will stay from foul revenge. Uh, my sovereign, pardon the author of ill news, and I'll bewray the fortune of my son. Speak on, uh, I'll guerdon thee, whate'er it be, mine ear is ready to receive ill news. Stand up, I say. Tell thy tale at large. Hear, hear that truth, which these mine eyes have seen. When both the armies were in battle joined, Don Balthasar, amidst the thickest troops, to win renown, did wondrous feats of arms. Amongst the rest, I saw him, hand to hand, in single fight with their Lord General. Alexandra, that here counterfeits under the color of a duteous friend, discharged her pistol at the prince's back, as though he would have slain their general. But therewithal, Don Balthazar fell down. And when he fell, and we began to fly, but had he lived, the day had sure been ours. Oh, wicked forgery! Oh, traitorous miscreant! Hold thy peace! Thou false, unkind, unthankful, traitorous wretch! Wherein had Balthazar offended thee that thou shouldst thus betray him to our foes? Was Spanish gold that bleared so thine eyes that thou could see no part of our deserts? Or perchance, because thou art the Lady of Tercera, thou hadst some hope to wear this diadem if first my son and then myself were slain of oh, die. Aye, this was it that made thee spill his blood. I'll wear it now till thy blood be spilt. Don't say dread sovereign to hear me speak. Now away with her. Her sight is second hell. Keep her till we determine of her death. Volupo, follow us for thy reward. Senor Horatio, this is the place and hour wherein I must entreat thee to relate the circumstances of Don Andrea's death, who living was my garland's sweetest flower. For love of him and service to yourself, I nil refuse this heavy, doleful charge. When both our armies were enjoined in fight, your worthy chevalier, amidst the thickest, was at the last by young Don Balthazar encountered hand to hand. Their fight was long, but wrathful nemesis, that wicked power, brought in a fresh supply of halberdiers, which paunched his horse and dinged him to the ground. Then young Don Balthazar, with ruthless rage, taking advantage of his foe's distress, did finish what his halberdiers begun, and left not till Andrea's life was done. I, with my band, set forth against the prince and brought him prisoner from his halberdiers. Wouldst thou had slain him that so slew my love? I saw him honored with due funeral. This scarf I plucked from off his lifeless arm and wear it in remembrance of my friend. I know the scarf, but he had kept it still, for twas my favor at his last depart. But now, where thou it both for him and me. And madam, Don Horatio will not slack, humbly to serve fair Bell Imperia. And now, if your good liking stand there too, I'll crave your pardon to seek the king. Aye, go, Horatio, leave me here alone, for solitude best fits my cheerless mood. Yet what avails to wail Andrea's death from whence Horatio proves my second love? Had he not loved Andrea as he did, he could not sit in Bell Imperia's thoughts. But how can love find harbor in my breast till I revenge the death of my loved? Yes, second love, 
shall further my revenge. I love Horatio, and my Andrea's friend, the more to spite the prince that wrought his end, and where Don Balthazar that slew my love himself now pleads for my favor at my hands. He shall, in rigor of my just disdain, reap long repentance for his murderous deed. Sister, what means this melancholy walk? That for a while I wish no company. I hear the prince is come to visit you. That argues that he lives in liberty? No, madam, but in pleasing servitude. Your prison, then, belike is your conceit. What if conceit have laid my heart to gauge? Tush, tush, my lord, let go these ambages, and in plain terms acquaint her with your love. What boots complaint when there's no remedy? Yes, to your gracious self must I complain, in whose fair answer lies my remedy, on whose perfection all my thoughts attend. Alas, my lord, these are but words, of course, and but device to drive me from this place. Adam, your glove. Uh, thanks, good Horatio. Take it for thy pains. Signor Horatio stooped in happy time. Lord, be not dismayed for what is past. These clouds will overblow with little wind. Let me alone. I'll scatter them myself. The king, my lords, is coming hither straight to feast the Portingal ambassador. Then here it fits us to attend the king. To welcome hither our ambassador, and learn my father and my country's health. See, see, ambassador, how Spain entreats their prisoner Balthazar, thy viceroy's son, with pleasure more in kindness than in wars. Hmm. Sad is our king, and Portugal laments, supposing that Don Balthazar is slain. But now you see how Balthazar is slain. I frolic with the Duchess of Castle's son, wrapped every hour in pleasures of the court and graced with favors of his majesty. Put off your greetings till our feast be done. Now come and sit with us and taste our cheer. Sit down, young prince. You are a second guest. Sister, sit down. Nephew, take your place. Now nobles, fall to. Spain is Portugal and Portugal is Spain. We both are friends. Tribute is paid and we enjoy our right. But where is old Aronimo, our marshal? He promised us in honor of our guests to grace our banquet with some pompous jest. This mask contents mine eye, although I sound not well the mystery. The first armed knight that hung his scutcheon up was English Robert, Earl of Gloucester, who, when King Stephen Borsway in Albion, arrived with five and twenty thousand troops in Portugal and by successive war enforced the king to bear the yoke of the English monarchy. The second knight that hung his scutcheon up was Edmund, Earl of Kent in Albion. He came likewise and raised Lisbon walls, and took the King of Portugal in fight, for which and other such like service done, he after was created Duke of York. Our friend of Portugal, by these you see that which may comfort both your king and you, and make your late discomfort seem the less. But now, Ironimo, what were the last? The third and last, not least in our account, brave John of Gaunt, the Duke of Lancaster, he with a puissant army came to Spain and took our king of Castile prisoner. 
<laughs> this is an argument for our viceroy, since English warriors likewise conquered Spain and made them bow their knees to Albion. Ironimo, I drink to thee for this device. Hmm. Uh, uh, pledge me, Ironimo, if thou love thy king. Ambassador, I fear we sit but over long. Now let us in that you may be dispatched. I think our council is already set. Come we from the depth of underground to see him feast that gave me my death's wound. Nothing but league and love and banqueting. Be still, Andrea. Ere we go from hence, I'll turn their friendship into fell despite. Their love to mortal hate, their day to night, their hope unto despair, their peace to war, their joys to pain, their bliss to misery. My lord, though Bell Imperia seem thus coy, let reason hold you in your wanted joy, and she in time will fall from her disdain. No, she is wilder and more hard withal. It is my fault, not she that merits blame. My words are rude and work her no delight. My lord, for my sake, leave this ecstasy. And doubt not, but we'll find some remedy. Some cause there is that lets you not be loved. First, that must needs be known and then removed. I have already found a stratagem to sound the bottom of this doubtful theme. By force or fair means will I cast about to find the truth of all this question out. Ho, oh, Pedrangano! Senor, hath your lordship any service to command me? Aye, Pedrangano, service of import. Thus stands the case. It is not long, thou knowest, since I did shield thee from my mother's wrath for thy conveyance in Andrea's love. I stood betwixt thee and thy punishment. Now to these favors will I add reward. Not with fair words, but with store of golden coins and lands and living joined with dignities, if thou but satisfy my just demand. Whatever it be, your lordship shall demand. Then, Pedrangano, this is my demand. Whom loves my sister, Belimperia? For she reposeth all her trust in thee. I mean, whom loves she in Andrea's place? Alas, my lord, since Don Andrea's death, I have no credit with her as before. Nay, if thou dally, then I am thy foe, and fear shall force what friendship cannot win. Oh, stay, my lord, if Madame Bell Imperia be in love. What villain, ifs and ands? Oh, stay, my lord, she loves Horatio. <laughs> what? Don Horatio, our knight marshal's son. She sent him letters which myself perused, preferring him to Lord Balthazar. In hope thine oath is true, here's thy reward. Be watchful when and where these lovers meet, and give me notice in some secret sort. I, I will, my lord. Thou knowest that I can more advance thy state than she. Be therefore wise, and fail me not. Where words prevail not, violence prevails. <laughs> but gold doth more than either of them both. How likes Prince Balthazar this stratagem? Both well and ill. It makes me glad and sad. Glad that I know on whom to be revenged. Sad that she'll fly me if I take revenge. Yet must. I take revenge or die myself, for love resisted grows impatient. I think Horatio be my destined plague. Now in his mouth he carries pleasing words and through her ears dives down into her heart and in her heart set him where I should stand. Let's go, my lord. Her favor must be won by his remove. Now, madam, since by favor of your love our hidden smoke is turned to open flame, and that with looks and words we feed our thought, thus, in the midst of love's fair blandishments, 
Why show you sign of inward languishments? My heart, sweet friend, is like a ship at sea. She wisheth port where riding all at ease, she may repair what stormy times have worn. Oh, sleep, mine eyes, see not my love profaned. Die, heart, another joys what thou deservest. Watch still, mine eyes, to see this love disjoined. Live, heart, to joy at fond Horatio's fall. Why stands Horatio speechless all this while? But whereon dost thou chiefly meditate? On dangers past and pleasures to ensue. What dangers and what pleasures dost thou mean? Dangers of war and pleasures of our love. Let dangers go. Thy war shall be with me. Speak thou fair words, I'll cross them with fair words. Send thou sweet looks, I'll meet them with sweet looks. Be this our warring peace or peaceful war. But gracious madam, then appoint the field where trial of this war shall first be made. Ambitious villain, how his boldness grows. Then by thy father's pleasant bower the field, where first we vowed a mutual amity. The court were dangerous. That place is safe. Return we now into your mother's sight. Dangerous suspicion waits on our delight. Aye. Danger mixed with jealous despite shall send thy soul into eternal night. Mr. of Castle, to the prince's love, what says your daughter Belimperia? I doubt not I, but she will stoop in time. And were she forward, which she will not be, yet herein shall she follow my advice, which is to love him or forego my love. Then, good ambassador of Portugal, advise thy king to make this marriage up. For strengthening of our late confirmed league, her dowry shall be large and liberal. The tribute which you pay shall be released. And if by Balthazar she have a son, he shall enjoy the kingdom after us. Commend me to the king, and so farewell. But where's Prince Balthazar to take his leave? That is performed already, my good lord. Ah, the prince's ransom must not be forgot. That's none of mine, but his that took him prisoner. It was Horatio, our knight marshal's son. Between us, there's a price already pitched and shall be sent with all convenient speed. Farewell, my lady of Castile, and the rest. Now, sister, you must take some little pains to win fair Belimperia from her will. Endeavor you to win your daughter's thought. If she give back, all this will come to naught. Now that the night begins with sable wings to o'ercloud the brightness of the sun. Come, Belle Imperia, let us to the bower, and there in safety pass a pleasant hour. Uh, go, Pedragano, watch without the gate, and let us know if any make approach. Instead of watching, I'll deserve more gold by fetching Don Lorenzo to this match. What means, my love? I know not what myself, and yet my heart foretells me some chance. Sweet, say not so. Fair fortune is our friend. Hark, madam, how the birds record by night for joy that Bell Imperia sits in sight. No, Cupid counterfeits the nightingale to frame sweet music to Horatio's tale. If Cupid sing, and Venus is not far, and thou art Venus, or some fairer star. If I be Venus, thou must needs be Mars, and where Mars reigneth, there must need be wars. Oh, stay a while, and I will die with thee. Uh, who's there? Pedragano! We are betrayed. My lord, away with her. Take her aside. Quickly dispatch. What? Will you murder me? I thus, <laughs> and thus. <laughs> These are the fruits of love. Oh, save him, brother. Save him, Balthazar. 
I loved Horatio, but he loved not me. But Balthazar loves Bell Imperia. Uh, murder! Murder! Help! Hieronimo! Help! Stop her mouth! <clears throat> Away with her. But I'm Christ, pluck me from my naked bed. Kill my throbbing heart with naked fear. Who calls Hieronimo? Speak! Here I am! I did not slumber, therefore it was no dream. Oh no, it was some woman cried for help, and here within this garden did she cry. But stay. What murderous spectacle is this? A man hanged up and all the murder is gone. And in my bower to lay the guilt on me. These garments that he wears, I oft have seen. Alas, it is Horatio, my sweet son. Oh, is it now that calls me from my bed? Oh, speak, if any spark of life remain. I am thy father who hath slain my son. What vicious monster not of human kind hath here been glutted with thy harmless blood and left thy bloody corpse dishonored here? to draw me in an ocean of my tears. I, the most wretched, that have lost my joy in losing my Horatio, my sweet boy. My husband's absence makes my heart to throb. Ironimo? Yeah. Isabella, help me to lament, for sighs are stopped and all my tears are spent. What world of grief! My son Horatio! Oh, where's the author of this endless woe? Were the author were some ease of grief, were in revenge, my heart would find relief. Then is he gone? And is my son gone too? Oh, gush out tears, and fountains, and floods of tears! Blow sighs and raise an everlasting storm. Look with us tonight, frolic and merry. He had no custom to stay out so late. He may be in his chamber. Some go see. Jakes, Pedro, how? Why me? He raves. Oh, sweet Ironimo. I wonder how this fellow got his clothes. Oh. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, I'll know the truth of all. Jakes! Run to the Duchess of Castle presently, and bid my son, Horatio, to come home. I and his mother have had strange <laughs> dreams tonight. Do you hear me, sir? Yeah, I, sir. Well, sir, be gone! Oh. Uh, Pedro, come hither. Knowst thou who this is? Oh, too well, sir. Too well? Who, who, who is it? Nay, blush not. He is my lord, Horatio. <laughs> St. James, but this doesn't make me laugh that there are more deluded than myself. I would have sworn myself within this hour that this had been my son, Horatio. His garments are so like. <laughs> no, they're not great persuasions. Oh, would to God it were not so. Were not, Isabella. Dost thou dream it is? Dear Hieronimo, cast a more serious eye upon thy grief. Was a man sure that was murdered here, a youth, as I remember, I cut him down. If it should prove my son now, after all. Say you? Say you right! Let me a taper! Let me look again! Oh, God! Kill me quickly. Be gracious to me, thou infective knight, and let me not survive to see the light. Oh, sweet Horatio. Oh, my dearest son. Oh, how strangely he has lost his way to grief. Oh, worthy son. Not conquered, but betrayed. I'll kiss thee now, for words with tears are stained. And I'll close up the glasses of his sight. For once these eyes were only my delight. Seest thou this handkerchief stained with his blood? It shall not from me till I take revenge. Seest thou these wounds that are yet are bleeding fresh? I'll not entomb them till I have revenge. Time is the author of both truth and right, and time will bring this treachery to light. Meanwhile, good Isabella, cease thy plaints, or at the least dissemble them a while, so shall we sooner find the practice out and learn by whom all this was brought about. Come, Isabel. Now let us take the him up and bear him in from out this cursed place.
Broughtest thou me hither to increase my pain? I look that Balthazar should have been slain, but tis my friend Horatio that is slain, and they abuse fair Bell Imperia, on whom I doted more than all the world. The sickle comes not till the corn be ripe. Be still, and ere I lead thee from this place, I'll show thee Balthazar in heavy case. <laughs> In fortunate condition of kings, seated amid so many helpless doubts. First we are placed upon extremest height, and oft supplanted with exceeding hate. For instance, nobles, look upon your king by hate, deprived of his dearest son, the only hope of our successive line. I had not thought that Alexandra's heart had been envenomed with such extreme hate. Uh -oh. No, for my lord, had you beheld the train, that feigned love had colored in her looks, when her in camp consorted Balthasar, far more inconstant, had you thought of the sun than Alexandra's purpose to the prince. No, no more, Volupo, thou hast said enough. Nor shall I longer dally with the world, procrastinating Alexandra's death. Fetch the traitor forth that as she is condemned, she may die. But in extremes, what patience shall I use? Nor discontents it me to leave the world with whom there nothing can prevail but wrong. No, oh, why linger ye? Bring forth that daring fiend and let her die for her accursed deed. Bind her, and burn her body in those flames that shall prefigure those unquenched fires of Phlegathon. Prepare it for her soul. My guiltless death will be avenged on thee, on thee, Vilupo, that hath malice thus. Nay, Alexandra, thou menace me, I'll lend a hand to send me to the lake, where thou, thy words shall perish with my words. Injurious creature, monstrous promise. Stay, hold a while. And here, with pardon of his majesty, lay hands upon Volupo. Ambassador, what, what news hath urged this sudden entrance? No, sovereign lord, that Balthazar doth live. What sayest thou? Liveth Balthazar, my son? Your highness's son, Lord Balthazar, doth live, and well entreated in the court of Spain, humbly condemns him to your majesty. <laughs> My son doth live. Your tribute is received. Thy peace is made, and we are satisfied. You accursed wretch, to intimate these ills against the life and reputation of noble Alexandra. Come, my friends, unbind her. Say, false Valupo, wherefore didst thou thus falsely betray Lady Alexandra's life? Say, treacherous Volupo, tell the king, wherein hath Alexandra used thee ill? Ah, my guilty soul submits me to thy doom. Not for Alexandra's injuries, but for the Lord, who hopes to be preferred. That's shamelessly hazarded her life. No, which villain shall be ransomed with thy death? And not so mean a torment as we here devise for her who thou saidst slew our son, but with the bitterest torments and extremes that yet may be invented for thine end. And Alexandra, let us honor thee with public notice of thy loyalty. Oh, eyes. 
no eyes but fountains fraught with tears. Oh, life, no life but lively form of death. Oh, world, no world but mass of public wrongs. Oh, sacred heavens, if this unhallowed deed shall unrevealed and unrevenged pass, how should we term your dealings to be just if you unjustly deal with those that in your justice trust? Eyes, life, world, heavens, hell, night and day, see, search, show, send some man, some mean that may. What's here? A letter? Tush, it is not so. A letter written to Hieronymo. For want of ink, receive this bloody writ. Me hath my hapless brother hid from thee. Revenge thyself on Balthazar and him, for these were they that murdered thy son. Hieronymo, revenge Horatio's death, and better fare than Bel Imperia doth. My son slain by Lorenzo and the prince? What cause had they Horatio to malign? Or what might move thee, Bel Imperia, to accuse thy brother had he been the mean? Hieronymo, beware, thou art entrapped. Thou art betrayed, and to entrap thy life the train is laid. This is devised to endanger thee, that thou by this Lorenzo shouldst accuse, and he for thy dishonor done should draw thy life in question and thy name in hate. I therefore will by circumstances try what I can gather to confirm this writ. Now, Pedrangano. Now, Eronimo. Where's thy lady? I know not. Here's my lord. Oh no, who's this? Ironimo? My lord. He asketh for my lady Bell Imperia. What to do, Ironimo? The Duchess, my mother, hath upon some disgrace a while removed her hence. But if it be aught, I may inform her of. Tell me, Ironimo, and I'll let her know it. Nay, nay, my lord, I thank you, shall not need. I had a suit unto her, but too late, and her disgrace makes me unfortunate. I humbly thank your lordship. Why then, farewell. My grief, no heart, my thoughts, no tongue can tell. Come hither, Pedrangano, seest thou this? My lord, I see it, and suspect it too. This is that damned villain, Cerberine, that hath, I fear, revealed Horatio's death. My lord, she could not, t'was so lately done, and since she hath not left my company. I know her humor, and therewith repent that e'er I used her in this enterprise. Here, for thy further satisfaction, take thou this. This night thou must, and prithee so resolve, meet Sir Berine at St. Luigi's Park. There take thy stand, and see thou strike her sure, for die she must, if we do mean to live. But how shall Sir Berine be there, my lord? Me alone. I'll send her to meet the prince and me, where thou must do this deed. It shall be done, my lord, it, it shall be done. When things shall alter, as I hope they will, then shalt thou mount for this. Thou knowest my mind. Qui est la? My lord? Go to Cerberine and bid her forthwith meet the prince and me at St. Luigi's Park. I go, my lord. But let the hour be eight o'clock. Bid her not fail. I fly, my lord. Now, to confirm the calm plot thou hast cast of all these practices, I'll spread the watch upon precise commandment from the king, strongly to guard the place where Pedrangano this night shall murder hapless Cerberine. And thus, one ill another must expulse. This sly inquiry of Ironimo for Bel Imperia breathes suspicion. The suspicion bodes a further ill. Now, Pedrangano, get thy pistol hold and hold on fortune. Once more favor me. Give me but success to mind attempting spirit. I know, if need should be, my noble lord will stand between me and ensuing harms. Besides, this place is free from all suspect. Here, therefore, I will stay and make my stand. I wonder much to what intent it is that we are expressly charged to watch. It is by commandment in the king's own name. 
Uh, but we were never one to watch him ward so near the Duchess, his sister's house before. Content yourself. Stand close. There's someone in it. Here, Sir Brian, attend and stay thy pace. For here did Lorenzo's page appoint that thou by his command shouldst meet him. Oh, here comes that bird I must seize upon. I wonder that his lordship stays so long, or wherefore should he send for me so late? For this, Sir Brian, and thou shalt act. Hark, friends, this is a pistol shot. And here's one slain. Oh, stay the murderer. Not by the sorrows of souls in hell. Lay first hand on me, I'll be their priest. Confess, and there and play the priest. Why hast thou thus unkindly killed this last? Why? Because you walked abroad so late. Come, to the marshals with the murderer. On to Hieronymo's. Huh, Hieronymo, carry me before whom you will, and do your worst, for I defy you all. <sighs> Oh, how now, my lord? What makes you rise so soon? Fear of preventing our mishaps too late. For I suspect, and the presumption is great, that by those base confederates in our fault, touching the death of Don Horatio, we are betrayed to old Ironimo. Betrayed, Lorenzo. Tush, it cannot be. I am persuaded, and dissuade me not, that all's revealed to Ironimo, and therefore know that I have cast it thus. But here's the page. How now? What news with thee? My lord, Cerberine is slain. Who? What? Cerberine? Your highness' servant, my lord. Speak, um, page. Who murdered her? He that is apprehended for the fact. Who? Pedrangano. What? Is Cerberine slain that loved her lord so well? Injurious villain murderer of her friend. My lord, let me entreat you to take the pains to exasperate and hasten his revenge with your complaints unto my lord. Sure they, the king. Sure they, Don Lorenzo, he shall die. Meanwhile, I'll haste the martial sessions, for die he shall, for this his damned deed. Like so. This fits our former policy. I lay the plot, he prosecutes the point, I set the trap, he breaks the worthless twigs and sees not that wherewith the bird was limed. Who's there? I have a letter to your lordship from Pendrangano that's imprisoned. Oh, he is in prison then. Yeah, I, my good lord. What would he with us? He writes us here. Stand, good lord, and help him in distress. Tell him I have his letters, know his mind, and what we may, let him assure him of. Haste, friend, be gone. My page shall follow thee. This works like wax. Yet once more, try thy wits. Page, go. Convey this purse to Pedrogano, and be advised that none be thereabout. Bid him be merry still, but secret. Bid him not doubt of his delivery. Tell him his pardon is already signed. And thereon, bid him boldly be resolved. Show him this box. Tell him his pardon's in it. But open it not, and if thou lovest thy life. But let him wisely keep his hopes unknown. He shall not want while Don Lorenzo lives. Away. I go, my lord. I fly. Now stands our fortune on a tickle point, and now or never ends Lorenzo's doubts. My lord hath forbidden me to look in this box, and by my troth tis likely, if he had not warned me, I should have not so much idle time. That they are forbidden, they will soonest attempt. So I now. By my bare honesty, here's nothing but the empty box. Were it not sin against secrecy, I would say it were a piece of gentlemanlike knavery. I must go to Pedrangano and tell him his pardon is in this box. I cannot choose but smile to think how the villain will flout the gallows, scorn the audience, and discount on the executioner, <laughs> and all presuming of his pardon from hence. It's not a scurvy jest that one should jest themselves to death. <laughs> A 
Thus must we toil in other men. No, not the remedy of all. Do them justice, while unjustly we, for all our wrongs, can compass no redress. Worthy Aronimo, your office asks a care to punish such as do transgress. So is my duty to regard his death, who when he lived deserved my dearest blood. Bring forth the prisoner for the court is set. Gramercy, page, but it was time to come, for I had written my lord anew a near matter that concerneth him, for fear his lordship had forgotten me. But since he hath remembered me so well, come, come, come on. When shall we to this gear? Stand forth, thou monster, murderer of friends. Confess thy folly and repent thy fault, for there's thy place of execution. This is short work. Well. Dear Marshal Shep, first, I confess, nor fear I death, therefore, I am the man. Twas I that slew Sir Bride. But, sir, then you think that this shall be the place where we shall satisfy you for this gear? I, Pedringano. <laughs> now I think not so. Peace, impudent, for thou shalt find it so. For blood with blood shall, while I sit as judge, be satisfied and the law discharged. Dispatch, the faults have proven and confessed. Come, sir, are you ready? To do what, my fine officious knave? To go to this gear, come, sir. So then I must up? No remedy. Yes, but there shall be for my coming down. I pray, sir, dispatch, the day goes away. What, do you hang by the hour? Nay, dost thou see yonder page with the box in her hand? What? She that points to it with her finger? Aye, that companion. I know her not, but what of her? What hast she in her box, as thou thinkest? Faith, I cannot tell, nor care I greatly. Methinks you should rather hearken to your soul's health. Well, I take it that what's good for the body is likewise good for the soul, and it may be in that box is balm for both. Well, thou art even the merriest piece of flesh that e'er groaned at my office door. Dispatch and see this execution done. Nay, soft, no haste. Why, wherefore stay you? Have you hope of life? Why, I, by my pardon from the king. Stand you on that, then you shall off with this. So, executioner. Convey him hence, but let the body be unburied. Let not the earth be choked or infect with that which heaven contends. Where shall I run to breathe abroad my woes? My, my woes whose weight hath wearied the earth, or mine exclaims that have surcharged the air with broken sighs and restless passions. The winged mountain hovering in the air beat at the windows of the brightest heavens, soliciting for justice and revenge. I find the place impregnable, and they resist my woes and give my words no way. O oh Lord, sir, God bless you, sir, the man, sir, uh, uh, Pedregrade, sir, he that was so full of merry conceit. Well, what of him? O oh Lord, Sir, he went the wrong way. The fellow had a fair commission to the contrary. We have done him wrong. I warrant thee, give it me. You will stand between the gallows and me. Aye, aye. Thank your word. My lord, I write as mine extremes required that you would labor my delivery. If you neglect, my life is desperate, and in my death I shall reveal the truth. You know, my lord, I slew him for your sake, and was confederate with the prince and you. Won by rewards and hopeful promises, I hope to murder Don Horatio too. Hope he to murder my Horatio? And actors in the cursed tragedy was thou, Lorenzo, Balthazar, and thou, of whom my son, my son, deserved so well. What have I heard? What have mine eyes beheld? Now see I what I durst not then suspect, that Bell Imperia's letter was not feigned. Oh, false Lorenzo, are these thy flattering looks? And Balthazar, bane to thy soul and me. Was this the ransom he reserved thee for? Woe to the cause of these constrained wars. Woe to thy birth, thy body, and thy soul. But 
Wherefore waste I mine unfruitful words, when naught but blood will satisfy my woes. I will go plainly to my lord the king, and cry aloud for justice through the court, and either purchase justice by entreats, or tire them all by my revenging threats. So that you say this herb will purge the eye, and uh, this the head. Oh, but none of them will purge the heart. No, there's no medicine left for my disease, nor any physic to recure the dead. <laughs> Horatio! Oh, where's Horatio? Good madam, affright not thus yourself with outrage for your son Horatio. He sleeps quiet in the Elysian fields. <laughs> my soul! Poor soul. Thou talk'st of things, thou knowest not what. My soul hath silver wings that mounts me up unto the highest heavens, to heaven. I there sits my Horatio that died. I died, a mirror in our days. But say, where shall I find those fiends, the murderers that slew Horatio? Whither shall I run to find them out that murdered my son? Thou art assured that thou sawest him dead. Or else, my lord, I live not. That's enough. Here, take my ring and give it to the guard, and bid him let my sister be enlarged, and bring her hither straight. This that I did was for a policy, to smooth and keep the murder secret, which as a nine days wonder being o'erblown, my gentle sister will I now enlarge. And time, Lorenzo, for my lady duchess you heard inquired for her yesternight. Why, and my lord, I hope you heard me say sufficient reason why she kept away. But that's all one, my lord, deal cunningly. Salve all suspicions, only soothe me up, and if she hap to stand on terms with us, as for her sweetheart and concealment so, jest with her gently. Under feign jest are things concealed that else would breed unrest. Here she comes. Now, sister. Sister? No, thou art no brother, but an enemy, else wouldst thou not have used thy sister so. First, to affright me with thy weapons drawn, and with extremes abuse my company, and then to harry me, like whirlwinds rage amidst a crew of thy confederates, and clap me up, where none might come at me what means this outrage that is offered me. Why was I thus sequestered from the court? Advise you better, Bel Imperia, for I have done you no disparagement. Unless by more discretion than deserved, I sought to save your honor and mine own. Mine honor? Why, Lorenzo, wherein is it that I neglect my reputation so as you or any need to rescue it? His Highness and my mother were resolved to come confer with old Hieronimo concerning certain matters of estate. And wherein was mine honor touched in that? Have patience, Bel Imperia, hear the rest. Me, next in sight, as messenger they sent. Now when I came, consorted with the prince, and unexpected in an arbor there, found Bel Imperia with Horatio. Why then, remembering that old disgrace, which you, for Don Andrea, had endured, and now were likely longer to sustain, thought rather, for I knew no readier means, thrust Horatio forth my mother's and carry you obscurely somewhere else, lest that her highness should have found you there. You, gentle brother, forge this for my sake, a work of worth worthy of the noting too, but what cause is this that you concealed me since? Your melancholy sister, since the news of your first favorite, Don Andrea's death, my mother's old wrath hath exasperated. And better wast for you, being in disgrace, to absent yourself, and give her fury place. But, Bel Imperia, see the gentle prince. Look on thy love, behold, young Balthazar, whose passions by thy presence are increased. Brother, you are become an orator. I know not I by what experience, 
too politic for me, past all compare since last I saw you. But content yourself. The prince is meditating higher things. Tis of thy beauty, then, that conquers kings. Of those thy tresses, Ariadne's twines, wherewith my liberty thou hast surprised. Then, fair, let Balthazar your keeper be. We'll go continue this discourse at court. Oh, accursed brother, unkind murderer, why bendst thou this my mind to martyr me? Hieronimo, why rate I up thy wrongs, or why art thou so slack in thy revenge? Oh, Andrea, oh, Andrea, thou hast seen this for my friend Horatio handled thus, and him for me, thus costless murdered. Hieronimo, tis time for thee to trudge. Down by the dale that flows with purple gore, stand at the fiery tower there sits a judge upon a seat of steel and molten brass, and twixt his teeth he holds a firebrand that leads unto the lake where hell doth stand. Away, Hieronimo! To him be gone, he'll do thee justice for Horatio's death. Turn down this path, thou shalt be with him straight, Soft and fair. Not so. Who will revenge Horatio's murder then? No, no. Fie, no. Pardon me. I'll none of that. This way. Uh now show, Ambassador, what our Viceroy saith. Hath he received the articles we sent? Justice! Oh, justice to Hieronimo! Back, seeing as thou not the king is busy. Oh, is he so? Who is he that interrupts our business? Not I. Hieronimo, beware. Go by, go by. Renowned king, he hath received and read thy kingly proffers and thy promised league, and as a man extremely overjoyed to hear his son so princely entertained. This for thy further satisfaction and kingly love, he kindly lets thee know, first for the marriage of his princely son with Bill Imperia, the, thy beloved niece. The news are more delightful to his soul than myrrh or incense to the offended heavens. In person, therefore, he will come himself to knit a sure intrixable band betwixt the crown of Spain and Portugal. No doubt, my lord, it is an argument of honorable care to keep his friend and wondrous zeal to Balthazar, his son. Now last, dread lord, here hath his highness sent his ransom due to Don Horatio. Horatio? Who calls Horatio? And well remembered. Thank his majesty. Here, see it given to Horatio. Justice! Oh, justice! Oh, my son, my son! My son, whom naught can ransom or redeem! Hieronimo, you are not well advised. Oh, hey, Lorenzo, hinder me no more, for thou hast made me bankrupt of my bliss. Give me my son! You shall not ransom him. Away! I'll rip the bowels of the earth and ferry over to the Elysian plains and bring my son to show his deadly wounds. I'll be avenged on you all for this. What means this outrage? What accident hath happed, Hieronimo? I have not seen him to demean him so. My gracious lord, he is with extreme pride conceived of young Horatio, his son, and covetous of having to himself the ransom of the young Prince Balthazar, distract and in a manner lunatic. Believe me, nephew, we are sorry for it. This is the love that fathers bear their sons. But, gentle sister, go give to him this gold. The prince's ransom, let him have his due. Happily Hieronimo hath need of thereof. But if he be thus helplessly distract, tis requisite his office be resigned and given to one of more discretion. We shall increase his melancholy so. Tis best that we see further in it first. And sister, now bring in the ambassador that she may be a witness of the match twixt Balthazar and Belimperia. Vindicta me, and stay, Hieronimo, attend their will, for mortal man may not appoint his time. 
Wise men will take their opportunity closely and safely, fitting things to time, and therefore all times fit not for revenge. Tis therefore will I rest me in unrest, dissembling quiet in unquietness, not seeming that I know their villainies, that my simplicity may make them think that ignorantly I will let all slip. No, no, Hieronimo, thou must enjoin thine eyes to observation and thy tongue to milder speeches than thy spirit affords, thy cap to curtsy and thy knee to bow, till to revenge thou know where, when, and how. Geronimo? Geronimo, where's Geronimo? Geronimo! What noise? Uh, here are a sort of uh, poor petitioners uh, that are importunate, and it shall please you, sir, that you uh, should plead their cases to the king. Oh, I let them enter and let me see them. I tell you this for learning and for love, there is not any advocate in Spain that will prevail or will take half the pain that he will in pursuit of equity. Uh, come near, good friends, that thus importune me. What's the matter? Sir, an action. Of battery? Mine of debt. Mine is an action of the case. Mine an ejectione firmi by a lease. Uh, content you, sirs. Are you determined that I should plead your several actions? I, sir. And here's my declaration. And here's my bond. And here's my lease. Uh, but wherefore stands yon silly man so mute, with mournful eyes and hands to heaven upreared? Come hither, father, let me know thy cause. No, sir. Could my woes give way unto my most distressful words, then should I not in paper, as you see, with ink bewray what blood began in me? What's here? The humble supplication of Don Bazuto for his murdered son. I, sir? No, no. It was my murdered son. Oh, my son, my son. Oh, my son. Horatio, here, take my handkerchief and wipe thine eyes. Oh, no, not this. Horatio, this was thine, but here, take this. And this, and, and what? My purse? I, this, and that. And all of them are thine. Oh, 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 see the kindness of Eronimo. His gentleness shows him a gentleman. See here a loving father to his son. Behold the sorrows and the sad laments that he delivereth for his son's decease. Then shames not Hieronimo to neglect the, the sweet revenge of thy Horatio. Though on this earth justice will not be found out, down to hell and in this passion, knock at the dismal gates of Pluto's court to torture Don Lorenzo and the rest. There will I rent and tear oh. them. Oh. Thus, oh. thus. Oh. Ah. my declaration. Here's my book. Alas, my no, me one drop of blood fall from the same. How is it possible I should slay it then? Nush, no, run after. <laughs> Catch them if you can. Oh. <laughs> and art thou come, Horatio, from the depth, to ask for justice in this upper earth, to tell thy father thou art unrevenged, to wring more tears from Isabella's eyes, oh. who lights, whose lights are dimmed with overlong laments. Oh, alas, my lord, whence springs this troubled speech? Oh, come, my Horatio. Horatio, thou art older than my father. Ah, oh, oh, my good lord, I am not your young son. I am a grieved man, and not a ghost that come for justice for my murdered son. <sighs> Now I know thee, now thou namest my, thy son. Thou art the lively image of my grief. Within thy face my, thy, my sorrows I may see. Come in, my man. Thou shalt to Isabel. Lean on my arm, I thee, thou me shalt stay. Thou and I and she will sing a song. Three parts in one. But all discords frame. Welcome, brave Viceroy, to the court of Spain, and welcome all his honorable train. Tis not unknown to us for why you come, or uh, have so kindly crossed the seas. 
Suffice it that mine honorable niece already is betrothed to Balthazar. Tomorrow are they to be married. To this intent, we entertain thyself, thy <laughs> followers, their pleasure, and our peace. Speak, friends of Portugal, shall it be so? Oh, renowned king, I come to solemnize the marriage of thy beloved niece, fair Belimperia, with my son Balthazar. With thee, my son, whom I sith I live to see, I'll give my crown, I'll give it her and thee. Come, worthy viceroy, and accompany thy, fen thy friend with thine extremities. Nay, hey, stay, Lorenzo. Let me talk with you. Seest thou entertainment of these kings, and thou knowest why this meeting is? For her, my lady, whom Balthazar doth love, and to confirm their promised marriage. Thou wouldst be low that any fault of thine should intercept her in her happiness? Heavens will not let Lorenzo err so much. It is suspected and reported, too, that thou, Lorenzo, wrongst Eronimo, and in his suits toward his majesty still keeps him back and seeks to cross his suit. That I, my lady? I tell thee, son, myself have heard it said. Lorenzo, knowst thou not the common love and kindness Eronimo hath won by his deserts within the court of Spain? Lorenzo, since thou thwart his passions, and he exclaimed against thee to the king what honor they were in this assembly, or what a scandal weren't amongst the kings to hear Eronimo exclaim on thee? Whence the, grows the ground of this report in court? My lady, it lies not in Lorenzo's power to stop the vulgar liberal of their tongues. Myself has seen thee busy to keep back him in his supplications from the king. Yourself, my lady, hath seen his passions that ill beseemed the presence of a king. And for I pitied him in his distress, I held him thence with kind and courteous words. Euronimo, my son, mistakes thee then? My gracious mother, believe me, so he doth. Come, Bel Imperia, sith heaven hath ordained thee to be mine, disperse those clouds and melancholy looks, and clear them up with those thy sun-bright eyes. My looks, my lord, are fitting for my love. I see my mother duchess. I'll go salute her. Welcome, brave prince, the pledge of Castle's peace, and welcome, Bell Imperia. Why comest thou sadly to salute us thus? Content thyself, for I am satisfied. It is not now as when Andrea lived. We have forgotten and forgiven that, and thou art graced with a happier love. Welcome, Eronimo. Welcome, Eronimo. Welcome, Eronimo. My lords, I thank you for Horatio. Eronimo, I hear you find yourself aggrieved at my son, because you have not had access to the king, and say tis he that inter interrupts your suits. Your son Lorenzo, whom my noble lord, the hope of Spain, mine honorable friend, these be the scandalous reports of such as love not me and hate my lord too much. Should I suspect Lorenzo would prevent or cross my suit that loved my son so well? My lord, I am ashamed it should be said. There, then pause, and for the satisfaction of the world, Eronimo frequent my homely house, the Duchess of Castle, Cyprian's ancient seat, and here, before Prince Balthazar and me, embrace each other and be perfect friends. I am Mary, my lady, and shall. Friends, quoth she, I will be friends with you all, especially with you, my lovely lord. Why, this is friendly done, Eronimo. And that, I hope. Old grudges are forgot. What else? It were a shame it should not be so. <laughs> Come on, Eronimo, my request. Let us entreat your company today. Such fearful sights as poor Andrea sees. Revenge, awake! Awake, revenge! For thou wilt ill advised to sleep. Awake! them that art warned to watch. Eronimo with Lorenzo is joined in league and intercepts our passage to revenge. Awake, revenge, for we are woe begone. Content thyself, Andrea, though I sleep. Yet is my mood soliciting their souls. Sufficeth thee that poor Hieronimo cannot forget his son Horatio, nor dies revenge, though he sleep a while. Is this the love that thou bearest Horatio? 
Is this the kindness that thou counterfeits? Hieronimo, for shame. Hieronimo, be not a history to aftertimes of such ingratitude unto thy son. Myself, a stranger in respect of thee, so loved his life, as still I wish their deaths, for here I swear in sight of heaven and earth. Shouldst thou neglect the love thou shouldst retain, myself should send their hateful souls to hell that wrought his downfall with extremest death. But may it be that Bel Imperia vows such revenge as she hath deigned to say. Why, then I see that heaven applies our drift, and all the saints do sit soliciting for vengeance on those cursed murderers. And here I vow, so you but give consent, and will conceal my resolution. I will ere long determine of their deaths that causeless thus have murdered my son. Hieronimo, I will consent, conceal, and aught that may affect for thine avail. Join with thee to revenge Horatio's death. On then, and whatsoever I devise, let me entreat you grace my practices, for why? A plot's already in my head. Why, how now, Hieronimo? We're here to entreat your help. My help? It pleased you, at the court, at the entertainment of the ambassador, to grace the king so much as with a show. Now, were your study so well furnished as for the passing of the first night sport to entertain my father with the like? Why then, I'll fit you say no more. When I was young, I gave my mind and plied myself to fruitless poetry, which though it pro profit the professor not, yet is it passing pleasing to the world. When in Toledo there I studied, it was my chance to write a tragedy, which long forgot I found this other day. Now, would your lordships favor me so much as but to grace me with your acting it? I mean, each one of you to play a part. What, w would you have us play a tragedy? Why, kings and emperors have taken delight to make experience of their wits in plays. In faith, Hieronimo, and you be in earnest, I'll make one. And I another. And now, my good lord, could you entreat your sister Bel Imperia to make one? A little entreaty shall serve me, Hieronimo, for I must needs be employed in your play. Why, this is well, I tell you, nobles, it was determined to have been acted by noble peers and scholars, too. And now it shall be played by princes and courtiers. If, as it is our country manner, you will but let us know the argument. That shall I roundly. The Chronicles of Spain record this written of a knight of Rhodes. He was betrothed and wedded at the length to one Perseda, an Italian dame, whose beauty ravished all that her beheld, especially the soul of Solomon, who at the marriage was the chiefest guest. By sundry means sought Solomon to win Perseda's love and could not gain the same. Then gan he break his passions to a friend, one of his pashas, whom he held full dear. Her had this pasha long solicited, and saw she was not otherwise to be won, but by her husband's death, this knight of Rhodes, whom presently by treachery he slew. She, stirred with an exceeding hate, therefore, as cause of this, slew Solomon, and to escape the pasha's tyranny, did stab herself. And this, the tragedy. Oh, excellent. <laughs> But say, Hieronimo, what then became of him that was the Pasha? Moved with remorse of his misdeeds, ran to a mountain top and hung himself. But, but which of us is to perform that part? Oh, that will I, my lords, make no doubt of it. I'll play the murderer, I warrant you. And what shall I? Great Solomon, the Turkish emperor. And I? Erastus, the knight of Rhodes. And I? Perseda. Chaste and resolute, and here, my lord, are several abstracts drawn for each of you to note your parts. Geronimo, methinks a comedy were better. A comedy? Fie, comedies are fit for common wits, but to present a kingly troop withal, give me a stately written tragedy. It must be so, and it shall be concluded in one scene, for there's no pleasure tain in tediousness. How like you this? He must resolve to soothe his humors up. On then, Hieronimo. Farewell till soon. Now shall I see the fall of Babylon, wrought by the heavens in this confusion. And if the world like not this tragedy, 
hard as the hap of old Hieronymo. Neither piety nor pity moves the king to justice or compassion. I will revenge myself upon this place where thus they murdered my beloved son. Down with these branches and these loathsome boughs from this unfortunate and fatal pine. Down with them, Isabella! Rent them up! and burn the roots from whence the rest is sprung. I will not leave a root, a stalk, a tree, a bough, a branch, a blossom, a leaf, not an herb within this garden plot. Fruitless forever may this garden be. <laughs> See, where his ghost solicits with his wounds revenge on her that should revenge his death. <gasps> Make haste, Hieronimo, to hold excuse thy negligence in pursuit of their deaths, whose hateful wrath bereaved him of his breath. Ah, nay, thou dost delay their deaths, for gifts the murderers of thy noble son. <sighs> And none but I bestir me <laughs> to no end. And as I curse this tree from further fruit, so with this weapon will I wound the breast, the hapless breast that gave Horatio suck. <laughs> How now, Eronimo, where's your fellows that you take all this pain? Lady, it is for the author's credit to look that all things may go well. But, lady, now let me entreat your grace to give the king the copy of the play. This is the argument of what we show. I will, Eronimo. Uh, one thing more, good duchess. Let me entreat your grace that when the train are passed into the gallery, you would vouchsafe to throw me down the key. I will, Eronimo. What? Are you ready, Balthazar? Bring a chair and a cushion for the king. How well done, Balthazar. Hang up the title. Our scene is Rhodes. What is your beard on? Half on. The other is in my hand. Dispatch for shame. Are you so long? <laughs> Now, Viceroy, we shall see the tragedy of Solomon, the Turkish emperor, performed of pleasure by your son, the prince, yeah. my nephew, Don Lorenzo, and my niece. Aye, and Ironimo, our marshal, at whose request they deigned to do it themselves. <laughs> These be the pastimes in the court of Spain. Uh, Here, sister, you shall be the bookie. Pasha, be thou graced with every excellence that Solomon can give, or thou desire. But thy desert in conquering Rhodes is less than in preserving this fair Perseida. See, Viceroy, that is Balthazar, your son, that represents the Emperor Solomon. How well he acts his amorous passion. Aye, <laughs> Belimperia hath taught him that. <laughs> That's because his mind runs all on Belimperia. <laughs> But let my friend, the Rhodian knight, come forth. Erasto, dearer than my life to me, that he may see Perseida, my beloved. Here comes Lorenzo. I, my Erasto, welcome to Perseida. Rhodes' loss is nothing to Erasto's joy. So if his Perseida lives, his life survives. Ah, Pasha, here is love between Erasto and fair Perseida, sovereign of my soul. Remove Erasto, mighty Solomon, and then Perseida will be quickly won. 
If he be our rival, let him die. Why, let him die, so love commandeth me. Erasto, Solomon saluteth thee. Hi, <laughs> me, Erasto, see Solomon Erasto slain. Yet liveth Solomon to comfort thee. Tyrant, desist soliciting vain suits. Relentless are mine ears to thy laments. Yet by thy power persuaded doth obey. But were she able, thus she would revenge thy treacherous, tre tre treacherous on thee, ignoble prince. <laughs> and on herself she would be thus revenged. <laughs> well said, old marshal. This was bravely done. Imperia plays Perseida well. Well, were this in earnest, Belimperia, you would be better to not to my son than so. But now what follows for Hieronimo? Mary, this follows for Hieronimo. Happily you think, but bootless are your thoughts, that this is fabulously counterfeit, and that we do as all tragedians do, to die today for fashioning our scene, and in a minute starting up again, revive to please tomorrow's audience. No princes, no. I am Hieronimo, the hopeless father of a hapless son, whose tongue is tuned to tell his latest tale, not to excuse gross errors in the play. Behold the reason urging me to this! Cool. See, here my show look on this spectacle. Here lay my hope, and here my hope hath end. Here lay my heart, and here my heart was slain. Here lay my treasure, here my treasure lost. Here lay my bliss. And here my bliss bereft, but hope, heart, treasure, joy, and bliss all fled, failed, died, yea, all decayed with this. Speak Portuguese, whose loss resembles mine. If thou canst weep upon thy Balthazar, tis like I wailed for my Horatio. And you, my lord, whose reconciled son, marched in a net and thought himself unseen, and rated me for brain-sick lunacy. How can you brook our play's catastrophe? And here, behold, this bloody handkerchief, which at Horatio's death I weeping dipped within the river of his bleeding wounds, soliciting remembrance of my vow. Poor Bellimperia missed her part in this. For though the story says she should have died, yet I, of kindness and of care to her, did otherwise determine of her end. But love of him whom they did hate too much did urge her resolution to be such. And princes, now behold Hieronimo, author and actor in this tragedy, bearing his latest fortune in his fist, and will as resolute conclude his part and gentles. Thus I end my play. Oh, uh, hearken, Viceroy, hold, Hieronimo. Oh, we are betrayed. My Balthazar is slain. Break open the doors. Run. Hold, Hieronimo. <laughs> Hieronimo, do but inform the king of these events. Upon mine honor, thou shalt have no harm. Viceroy, I will not trust thee with my life, which I this day have offered to my son. Speak, traitor. Damn it, bloody murderer, speak! For now I have thee, I will make thee speak. Why hast thou done this undeserving deed? Why hast thou murdered my Balthazar? Why hast thou butchered both my children thus? I tell thee, Viceroy, this day I've seen revenge, and in that sight am grown a prouder monarch than ever sat under the crown of Spain. Had I as many lives as there be stars, I'd give them all, I and my soul to boot. But I would see thee rise. This red pool. And who were thy confederates in this? Why speakest thou not? I may not, nor I will not tell thee. Fetch forth the tortures, traitor as thou art. Uh, I'll make thee tell. Indeed, thou mayst torment me, but never shall thou force me to reveal the thing which I have <laughs> vowed inviolate. And therefore, in despite of all thy threats, pleased with their deaths and eased with their revenge, first take my tongue and afterwards my heart. Oh! Mm. Oh! 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 resolution of a wretch! See, Viceroy, he hath hidden forth his tongue! Yet he can write! Uh, yeah, 
and and if if in this he satisfy us not, he will devise the extremest kind of death that ever was invented for a wretch. Oh, he would have a knife to mend his pen. I, 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 here, here, and advise thee that thou write the truth. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, look to my sister, Sam Ironimo. <laughs> What age hath ever heard such monstrous deeds? My sister and the whole succeeding hope that Spain expected after my decrees. Whatever befall, I am the next, the nearest, the last of all. Take up our hapless son, untimely slain. Set me with him and he with woeful me to weep my want for my sweet Balthazar. Spain hath no refuge for a porting gall. I now my hopes have had ends in their effects, when blood and sorrow finish my desires. Now I will beg at lovely Proserpine that by the virtue of her princely doom, I may consort my friends in pleasing sort, and on my foes work just and sharp revenge. I'll lead my friend Horatio through those fields where never dying wars are still inert. I'll lead fair Isabella to that train where pity weeps, but never feeleth pain. I'll lead my bell Imperia to these joys that honored maids and fair queens possess. But say revenge, for thou must help, or none against the rest, how shall my hate be shown? When this hand shall hail them down to deepest hell, where none but furies, bugs, and tortures dwell. Then, sweet revenge, do this at my request. Let me be judge and doom them to unrest. Let loose poor Titus from the vulture's grip, and let Don Cyprian supply his room. Place Don Lorenzo on Ixine's wheel, and let the lover's endless pain surcease. Hang Balthazar about Chimera's neck, and let him there bewail his bloody love, repining at our joys that are above. Let Cyprian roll the faint stone, and take from Sisyphus his endless moan. False Petriano, from his treachery let him be dragged through boiling Acheron and there live dying still in endless flame. Then haste we down to meet thy friends and foes, to place thy friends in ease, the rest in woes. <laughs> For here though death hath end their misery, I'll begin their endless tragedy. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. At the end, there's no talk back. Many people are going to talk back. I don't know if there's like a public talk back part or not. Actually, I'm not sure. No. We're seeing we're seeing hold on on the chat. No. Real talk. 